There is a universal saying, women are the backbone of society. And yet, while a strong backbone is integral to the proper functioning of any system, it remains hidden and plays a largely supportive role. This may be a perfect metaphor for the role of women in the political history of Trinidad and Tobago. Our collective Caribbean history has been one wrought with movements of resistance to oppressive social circumstances. Throughout these struggles, though they remain unheralded, women have played integral parts. Of particular note in the shaping of our present political landscape was the effect of the 1930s depression and the recognition women gained for their activism. Suddenly, women were striking alongside their male counterparts, causing disturbances that brought about the birth of the trade union movement. This type of social activism led towards the further involvement of women in representational politics. However, many women who were courageous enough to go against the status quo found themselves faced with gender bias and sexual discrimination while trying to maintain their roles as the primary caregivers at home. Nonetheless, there were a determined few who, despite the odds, made significant strides to take us to the point today where our region can boast of women like Dame Eugenia Charles of Dominica, Guyana's Janet Jagan, and Jamaica's Portia Simpson Miller. Female representation in Trinidad and Tobago's parliament is now fairly commonplace, thanks to the efforts of a cadre of phenomenal women who paved a firm path for others to follow. This house on Sweetbriar Road is where she used to live. It is no coincidence that the house sits right in the middle of the action, between the Queen's Park Oval and the Savannah, because Audrey Lane Jeffers understood that being in the middle of the action is how you enforced change. Born into a middle-class family, she was always empathetic to the plight of those less fortunate and went to England at the tender age of 15 to study social sciences. Upon her return, she became one of the founding members of the Coterie of Social Workers, pioneering the concept of social welfare in Trinidad and Tobago. Jeffers played an integral role in the establishment of the St. Mary's Home and the Children's Breakfast Centre, which provided lunch to school children. For many, this was their most substantial meal of the day. In 1929, she represented Trinidad and Tobago at the National Council for Women in the UK. In 1934, the San Fernando chapter of the Coterie was opened. Two years later, Jeffers was elected to the City Council and in 1946 became the first woman to be elected to the Legislative Council. She used her position to pressure the government to live up to its responsibility of caring for the poor and the needy in our society. Thanks to Audrey Jeffers, Trinidad and Tobago now has facilities for women, the disabled and the aged. Jeffers received the Order of the British Empire for her work and was posthumously awarded the Shakunia Gold Medal for Social Service. The first woman elected to the House of Representatives. The first woman minister. The first woman ambassador of Trinidad and Tobago. Isabel Tiche lays claim to all these firsts. Working her way up the ranks of the People's National Movement, Tiche became both chair of the PNM Women's League and lady vice chairman of the party in 1956. The PNM went on to win elections later that year. In 1961, she became parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Local Government and Community Development. Two years later, she took on the ministerial portfolios of health and housing. Her grace and charm made her a natural diplomat. She was appointed as our country's Ethiopian ambassador in 1970 and later became Trinidad and Tobago's High Commissioner to Guyana, a post she held until she retired. Tiche was posthumously awarded the Trinity Cross in 1981 for her contribution to public service.
Beatrice Walk was, at heart, a cultural enthusiast who became a senator in our country's first Senate, serving on the independent bench from 1961 to 1966. Passionate about Trinidad and Tobago's folk music, she researched the topic extensively and helped promote the genre. Her cultural contribution won her the Hummingbird Gold Medal at Trinidad and Tobago's first National Awards Ceremony in 1969. As an active member of the coterie of social workers, Verna Critchlow played an integral role in setting up the John John Day Nursing Program. Under the PNM administration, she served in the Senate and was also Parliamentary Secretary to Prime Minister Eric Williams. Later in her political career, she was appointed High Commissioner to Barbados and the Associated States. Known as the First Lady of Trinidad and Tobago politics, Lilias White was the first woman to become a member of both Houses of Parliament, serving as opposition senator from 1962 to 1966. In the 1966 general elections, she contested and won the point to pair seat for the Democratic Labour Party and served as the area's parliamentary representative until 1971, when the DLP was disbanded. White's political fervor was reignited in 1980 when she joined a new party, the Organization for National Reconstruction, which later became the National Alliance for Reconstruction. The Democratic Labour Party's political philosophy also attracted Margaret Lucky Samaru, who served as a loyal party member for 10 years. She was appointed senator in 1962's first independent parliament, the first of two East Indian women in our inaugural Senate. At a time when there were very few women blazing political trails, Lucky Samaru was a dynamic and inspiring role model to all who came after her. Ada Date Camps began her career as a doctor the only female medical practitioner at the time, at least in San Fernando, as a grade C medical officer at the San Fernando Hospital. She eventually became chair of the San Fernando Municipal Services Commission and was a national delegate at the conference of the British Commonwealth League of Women Voters in 1954. A foundation member of the People's National Movement, Mrs. Camps was appointed a senator in 1962, the year of Trinidad and Tobago's independence, and served two terms. She became the first female vice president of the Senate in 1970 and was awarded the Shaconia Gold Medal in 1981 for her contribution to community service. Ada Date Camps passed away in 2002. Ruby Felix joined the People's National Movement in April 1957. In 1971, she was appointed a senator and later held the portfolios of Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister and the Minister of Labour, Social Security and Cooperatives. Senator Felix was vocal in her vindication of the 1971 bill for the acquisition of land by the Governor-General and was an active member of several committees for the incorporation of religious organisations like the Christian Fellowship Assembly and the National Ecclesiastical Council of Spiritual Baptist Churches of Trinidad and Tobago. Kalawati Permanent was appointed an opposition senator in 1966 by the DLP and served till 1970. The daughter of prominent figure known simply as Pundit Kapildeo, she was part of a family with a long political history. Her brother, Dr. Rudranath Kapildeo, was then opposition leader and was awarded the Trinity Cross among other noteworthy accomplishments. During her years of political service, Mrs. Permanen was a consistent member of the House Committee of the Senate, which produced a report recommending that a new parliament building be established. San Fernando produced many of our country's politically active women, including Muriel Donoa McDavidson, 
a key founding member of the Caribbean Women's National Assembly, Tonawa contested the 1966 elections and won the seat for Faisabad. She would do the same for San Juan in 1981 and Lavantil in 1986. After four consecutive terms as a member of the House of Representatives, Muriel also served one term as Senator, becoming the longest serving MP in the PNM administration. Donawa McDavidson was a hard worker. Perhaps one of the most effective bills that she helped to pass was the act to provide for the incorporation of the Tobago Council for Handicapped Children. Always approachable and ready to serve, Muriel Donawa McDavidson was both well-spoken and well-liked, a true political icon. Cleopatra Romilly started her career as an assistant teacher at Gasparillo Government School. As she improved her qualifications, she moved on to Cunupia Government and later Four Roads Government School, where she was instrumental in the establishment of a youth club and a women's institute. Her life objective was always to help women and girls improve their standard of living in the home, family and community. She traveled throughout every county of Trinidad and Tobago, teaching the skill of home canning of fruits and vegetables. For her work, Cleopatra Romilly was awarded the Shaconia Silver Medal for her outstanding service to community development in Trinidad and Tobago in 1969. On June 11, 1971, she was appointed by Sir Solomon Hochoy to the Senate, where she served for the next five years under the PNM administration. As a senator, she continued to seek the interests of women and children, promoting the ideas of self-employment in the areas of handicraft and the need of the government to adhere to dialogue and public consultation. Beulah Nelson served as a DLP member in the Senate from 1972 to 1974. She made valuable contributions calling for more funds to be allocated for improvements in the infrastructure of South Trinidad. One of her noteworthy suggestions was for the reinstatement of a railway system to alleviate the problems caused by insufficient modes of transportation. Also a teacher, Elmina Cynthia Clark Allen was appointed to the Senate in 1976. She was also the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministries of Labour, Education, Culture, Industry and the Community. In 1981, she was elected as Member of Parliament for Toko Manzanilla and became Minister in the Ministry of Housing and Settlements. Hafiza Khan served as a Member of Parliament for the St. Augustine constituency for the United Labour Front from 1976 to 1981. She delivered her maiden speech during the budget debate of that year on December 15, 1976. Ms. Khan was known to support improvements in the national insurance system and was also keen on other social issues like pension schemes and the provision of pipe-borne water for the citizens nationwide. A nutritionist by profession, Louise Horn became an independent senator in 1976, the same year that Trinidad and Tobago gained its status as a republic. Her first order of business was improving the school feeding program, also making calls for the establishment of a family court as well as for the revision of the adoption ordinance. In 1984, she became chairperson of the Special Select Committee appointed to report on the act to incorporate the Seafront Lions Club of Trinidad, a volunteer service organization that went on to become a real force for social change and community integration in our country. Like Louise Horn, Marilyn Gordon was also appointed to the Senate in 1976, but under the PNM banner. Following the 1981 general elections, Gordon became the parliamentary representative for Ruka, serving as Minister of Education until 1986, 
when the People's National Movement lost the election to the National Alliance for Reconstruction, and she bowed out of politics for good. Local government gave Norma Lewis Phillip her political start. For eight years, she worked to improve the infrastructure in her area of St. George West. Her involvement at the county council level led her to become a member of the PNM in 1980. She was appointed parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Finance, with responsibilities that included assisting in the control and disbursement of funds for sport, culture, and community development projects. Amoy Mohammed was born on March 19, 1934, in Princestown. Before entering politics in 1956, she was active in her community and served on various committees such as the Advisory Council Home for the Aged, Carnival Development Committee, Child Welfare League, and the Local Board of Social Welfare. Mrs. Mohammed was elected as the representative for Princestown in 1981 and was given the portfolio of Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Sport, Culture and Youth Affairs. During her contributions in the House of Representatives, she was very vocal in her support of the government's housing policy, which she deemed to be essential to the country's developing economy. She also recommended that housing costs should be decreased by using less expensive, yet quality materials for use in housing projects. Senator Dora Bridgemohan was a sugar worker who was made an opposition senator by the ULF. She was active in seeking the welfare of farmers and the rural community. Ms. Bridgemohan also stood firmly in defense of women's rights and against the exploitation of women. She also supported fully the implementation of the school feeding program. Prior to her stint in the political arena in the 1980s, Ms. Olive Sawyer was known for her activities in the social service arena, where she served as a poor relief officer, youth camp and probation officer, community development supervisor, and special works officer on the boards of Bishop's High School. In 1974, she was the recipient of a National Award Medal of Gold for social service. In 1981, she became an independent member of the Senate. Here, her contributions clearly evidenced her desire for the improvement of the lives of citizens in Tobago by proposing that more funds be allocated for the Scarborough Hospital and also proper land ownership processes for securing the status of Tobagonian land tenants. It is said that she fought to empower the village fold and women and had an ice cream heart when it came to children, the poor, the aged, less fortunate, the grassroots. Senator Bawande Nan Sumai was sworn in as a PNM senator in 1981 and during her tenure gave her support to several bills, including one to incorporate the Tabernacle of Prayer in 1982. She was also one of the senators who enthusiastically supported the measures outlined in the 1984 budget. She served in the Senate until 1986. Pamela Nicholson's drive enthusiasm and strong political presence prove that women have a place in the political arena. A believer in the positive power of communities, she spent nearly 20 years supporting numerous village councils before deciding to throw her hat into the political ring in 1970. Eleven years later, she won the Tobago East seat as a member of the Democratic Action Congress, later finding common ideological ground with the National Alliance for Reconstruction. The NAR gave Nicholson her first ministerial post in education 
after the 1986 win, and she later became Minister of Settlements and Public Utilities, with the responsibility of supervising the National Housing Authority program. In 1995, when the United National Congress formed a coalition with the NAR to take control of the House from the PNM, Nicholson served in the joint government, but retired from politics soon afterwards. Muriel Green's political rise had a more traditional trajectory. She began her career in 1961 as an assistant secretary in the PNM Women's League. 21 years later, she became political leader on policy matters, as well as a senator in the PNM government, serving as Minister of Information. At the party's convention the following year, George Chambers, then Prime Minister and leader of the PNM, broke tradition by appointing Green the first ever female deputy political leader in the history of our country. Jennifer Johnson entered politics in 1971 as a member of the ACDC Democratic Labour Party, working as part of the Strategy Committee. She contested the San Fernando East seat in the country's 1976 general elections and in 1983 was a platform speaker for candidates contesting the Borough Council elections for the Organization for National Reconstruction Alliance. When the ONR became the NER, Johnson won the Princestown seat for the party in the 1986 elections, serving as the Minister of Sport until 1991. A teacher for many years, Gloria Henry found herself in the midst of an ideological and intellectual time in our nation's development. She joined the New World Movement at the University of the West Indies in 1968 and became a member of the Tapia House Movement in 1972. Four years later, she unsuccessfully contested the Arima seat for the party. But her political yearnings were not satisfied. Joining the NAR some years later, Henry won the seat for Aruka South. Her political portfolio has been varied. She has held the positions of Parliamentary Secretary, Minister of External Affairs, International Marketing and Tourism, Social Development and Family Service, and Education. This last portfolio was, of course, very dear to her heart, and during her time in the Aruka constituency, she worked to improve schools, healthcare, housing, and protective and government services in the community. Teaching also gave Gloria Tomasas Pollard an entry into politics. She served as a councillor of the Arima Borough Council during the period 1983 to 1986. It is noteworthy that her father was a former Speaker of the House and therefore the nuances of the political scene were not at all unfamiliar to her. Her desire to serve the nation at a higher level led her to successfully contest the Arima seat for the NAR in the 1986 general elections. She then served as Parliamentary Secretary until 1991. In the chamber, she played her part in seeking to advance the interests of her people, and particularly women. Mrs. Pollard was generally considered an individual who was very to the point, and thus there was little doubt of what matters she fully supported. Margaret Hector's political debut was at local government level with the ONR, also serving as Women's Affairs Officer for the party. In 1983, she unsuccessfully contested the Shagaramas Point Kumana Electoral District, but was to be vindicated in 1986 when she emerged victorious for the Diego Martin West constituency under the NAR banner. Under the ruling NAR, Hector then served as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Welfare and the Status of Women, after which she was appointed Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister. Another legal mind that found her way into politics is Amrika Tiwari Reddy, who served as Senator under the NAR government from 1987. 
During her tenure, she chaired several committees, including the Special Select Committees, to consider a bill for the registration and licensing of ships and sea crews, as well as amendments to the Larceny and Summary Courts bills. Since leaving the realm of politics, Mrs. Terari Reddy was made a High Court judge in 1988 and has since ruled over many high-profile cases. An attorney by profession, Donna Prowell became a senator in 1987 under the PNM and at the time was the youngest member. Ms. Prowell worked previously as a clerk at the Ministry of Finance and was also on attachment to the Office of Chief Parliamentary Counsel. As testimony of her legal training, Ms. Prowell's debate style on legislation, such as the CARICOM and Foreign Investments Bill and the Evidence Amendment Bill, was always crisp, well-researched and provided thorough analysis of the clauses at hand. Hulsey Bagan has a long track record in political and social activism. She began this career in 1982 as the chairperson of the Guayamere Action Group. In 1989, she headed the Social and Economic Division of the All Trinidad Sugar and General Workers Trade Union. She eventually took up an interest in Guyana, was the co-founder of International Solidarity for Democracy in Guyana, and eventually became the general coordinator of the ISDG. Ms. Bagan has also served as a director on the board of HEAL, Center for Drug Prevention, Rehabilitation, and Development of Healthy Lifestyles. In 1992, she was elected as the Member of Parliament for Chaguanas for the United National Congress, where she protested flooding in central Trinidad by sitting on the Uriah Butler Highway and left electoral politics after a disagreement with UNC leader Basdio Pandey. In more recent times, she has become the coordinator of the Coover North seat for the Congress of the People. Salisha Bash was appointed an opposition senator by the United National Congress in 1990 and stood boldly as the lone woman senator at that time. Senator Bash devoted her attention to women's affairs, promoted the improvement of occupational health and safety in Trinidad and Tobago, and also voiced valid recommendations for debt problems facing the University of the West Indies. Eugenia Peer, netball pioneer, captain of a winning world championship team, and Whitco Sportswoman of the Year for 1975, had also already received the Shaconia Gold Medal and Trinity Cross when she entered the political fray as the parliamentary representative for Port of Spain South. Eugenia Peer continued her service to her country under a PNM government for four years as the Minister of Sport and Youth Affairs, but opted out of politics once the PNM lost the general election. She was honored as a national icon at the Queen's Hall on November 30th, 2002, just prior to her passing away in December 2002. Jean Elder became a senator under the PNM administration, serving from 1992 to 1995. She taught at Mukarapo Girls RC School for more than 30 years, and upon retirement, became involved in adult education classes. The Corporal Punishment Amendment Bill was therefore one of the areas of legislation in which she took serious interest. During her service in the Senate, Ms. Elder also made valuable contributions to discussions on the prohibition of smoking and the YWCA Incorporation Ordinance. Shouter Baptists have Una Charles partly to thank for the recognition their religion enjoys today. Charles was herself a Baptist when she became involved in politics in 1980 and went on to serve as Senator on the Democratic Labour Party ticket from 1987 to 1991. She chaired the Special Select Committee that reported on the Act for the Incorporation of the Triune Shouter Baptists. Her interests were, however, not limited to this sphere 
but also included education and skills training. In a period of time when many were skeptical about the stringent financial measure being instituted by the NAR administration, she was strong in its defense, requesting that the opposition give the policies a chance to work and prove their worth. Harvard-educated attorney, Senator Elizabeth Manette, was quite vocal in her role as opposition senator, a position she held from 1996 to 1998. She was a member of the Public Accounts Committee and expressed her concerns about gambling as a threat to social welfare. Ms. Manette loaned support for the copyright bill, supporting the rights of local musicians to protect their work. She supported the Tobago House of Assembly bill, which proposed more autonomy for the THA. While a senator, Ms. Manette wrote a weekly political column for the Trinidad Express newspapers. Ms. Manette ventured into the private sector after leaving her public office until 2003, when she began working as a legal advisor to the government of Trinidad and Tobago on energy projects. At present, she is the principal of Manette and Associates, a legal and government relations firm. Another politically minded woman with religious connections was Shouter Baptist Minister Barbara Gray Burke. She was ordained as a Reverend Mother in 1975, one of the only two female archbishops in the Caribbean. Her social service activities have included the feeding the poor, visits to the various senior citizen homes, the establishment of a distress home for battered women, and the management of a full-time street children's program. In 1995, Archbishop Burke was appointed a government member of the Senate under a UNC administration. In the chamber, she sought the interests of the grassroots and espoused the importance of faith-filled living. Oka Seapol created history in 1992 when she was appointed the first female Speaker of the House of Representatives. She came from a well-known Southern family of lawyers and some would say that it was a natural progression to the office of Speaker and brought a much needed feminine flair to the office and is well remembered for her frequent donning of the ceremonial wig. During her time in this position, she served as joint president of the local branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and chaired several parliamentary committees. Speaker Seapol was dedicated to the ideals of democracy and never failed to demonstrate her knowledge of law. When she represented Trinidad and Tobago at several international fora, she distinguished herself by making many sterling contributions. In 1995, after failing in their bid to have a motion of no confidence moved against her, the government at that time believed that they had no alternative but to place her under house arrest in order to remove her from office. Sitting on the independent bench, Carol Mahadeo served as senator from 1992 to 1995. She began her career as a teacher, then went on to study law in London. Working her way up the legal ranks, she eventually became a well-respected senior magistrate. Ms. Mahadeo had an admirable social conscience, and though she never had children of her own, she worked closely with disadvantaged young people through the St. Jude's Home for Girls and St. Mary's Home for Children. She also had respect for the elderly and was active in the McDonald's home for the aged in San Fernando. Her grace, dignity and sense of humor will go a long way to her being remembered as a woman of substance. Carol Mahadeo passed away in 1997. Carol Merritt served as opposition senator on the UNC bench from 1992 to 1995. She had a background in the trade union struggle, having served as assistant secretary general of the Transport and General Workers Trade Union. 
When Miss Merritt was appointed a senator, she had vowed to take on the role of watchdog for the plight of women and the preservation of family. It is therefore not surprising that some of her major contributions in the debates of the Senate were on legislation dealing with unremunerated work, prescription drugs, crime escalation, rent restrictions, and maxi-taxi regulations. One of the most recognized names in local politics, Diana Mahabir Wyatt, graduated from McGill University in 1962 and got her Master of Science in Education from USCH in 2002. She began her career lecturing at the University of the West Indies in 1963. In 1966, she joined the Employers' Consultative Association of Trinidad and Tobago and gained valuable experience in industrial and government relations. She later served as CEO of the ECA as well as of the Caribbean Employers' Federation for close to 15 years, offering assistance to employers on management training, labor legislation, and HR development. She started her political career in 1991 as an independent senator and is perhaps best known for championing the cause of battered women and abused children, opening a halfway house called The Shelter. She believes that Trinidad and Tobago's Domestic Violence Act and care provisions for children still have a long way to go. She also has a passion for culture, having served on the boards of organizations like the National Carnival Commission and working as house manager for Pan Trinbago's Steel Band Festival. She now runs the private firm PMSL which provides consultancy services in personnel and industrial relations. She continues to be the chair of the Trinidad and Tobago Coalition Against Domestic Violence, Childline, a hotline for abused children and children at risk, and Stop Elderly Abuse Now, Sean, and is the CEO of the Caribbean Center for Human Rights. As a UNC Senator from 1995 to 2000, Vermala Tota Maharaj was appointed as Parliamentary Secretary for the Ministry of Agriculture. In 1999, she also held the position of Junior Minister in the Ministry of Health. During her service in the Senate, Tota Maharaj lent her voice to debates that included the amendment of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies, as well as the Equal Opportunities Act. Also a UNC-appointed senator, Carol Cuffey Dowlat served as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Housing and Settlements from 1995 to 1999. During this time, she served as chair to several special select committees to report on bills that included Trinbago Unified Calypsonians, land planning and development, the National Safety Council, and the Horticultural Society. Daphne Phillips holds a Bachelor of Science and a Master's Degree in Sociology of Development from the University of the West Indies. Phillips obtained her doctorate in Medical Sociology from the University of Illinois in 1993. She lectured at the University of the West Indies for many years before being appointed to the Senate by the UNC government in 1995 serving as Minister of Community Development, Culture and Women's Affairs. Six years later, she became Minister in the Ministry of Community Empowerment, Sport and Consumer Affairs with a focus on gender and the family. This appointment fit in well with her interests, having been a member of the Caribbean Association for Feminist Research and Action and represented Trinidad and Tobago on the OAS Programme for Women's Affairs. Sworn in as a senator in 1995 for the then opposition People's National Movement, Nafiza Mohammed was the opposition spokesperson in the Senate, serving until 2000. An attorney by profession, Ms. Mohammed was an avid debater 
on many of the more technical pieces of legislation brought to the Senate. These included matters on land acquisition, copyright, national trust, and constitution amendments. She continues to be an active member of the PNM. A qualified economist, Indira Sajawan entered politics in 1994 to contest the Karani East seat on a UNC ticket after the death of Shah Mohammed. She won her seat and became an active member of parliament until 1995. Sajawan remains very outspoken about the issue of constitutional reform and the need for it to be informed by the will of the people, curtailing executive power and allowing for greater transparency and accountability by government. Born in Tobago and the daughter of a PNM councillor, it can be safely said an involvement in politics was destined for Mrs. Deborah Moore Miggins. Interestingly though, when she agreed to serve in the Senate in 1995, it was at the invitation of Mr. A.N.R. Robinson and as a government member under the United National Congress. An attorney at law, Mrs. Moore Miggins holds an LLB Honours and as well an LLM. Prior to her senatorship, she had worked as the legal consultant for the Tobago House of Assembly, a part-time lecturer at the University of the West Indies, and was a member of the Guaya Passad Committee in 1996, studying the constitutional relations with the THA. She has been regularly involved in efforts to improve foreign government's legal and regulatory frameworks for civil aviation services. During her stint in the Senate, Mrs. Moore Miggins got the opportunity to act as President of the Senate. However, she was dissatisfied with the level of attention being given to the affairs of Tobago and subsequently resigned in 1996. She later contested a seat in the THA elections and was successful. During the years 2000 to 2001, she was the leader of the opposition in the Tobago House of Assembly. Agnes Williams served as a senator for the UNC NAR from 1997. She was an avid contributor in the chamber and spoke on a wide variety of topics which covered social issues like domestic violence, minimum wages, legal aid and advice, and maternity protection for women. She was also an active member of the Joint Select Committee for the bill to incorporate the Trinbago Unified Calypsonians organization. As a representative from Tobago, she was as vociferous as her other sister politicians on every finance matter that came before the House and any negative effects that could be brought on the citizens of Tobago. Miss Williams served as a senator until 2000. The consummate teacher, Donna Maria Carter, believed in the value of education and what it could accomplish. Having taught at both the secondary and tertiary levels locally and internationally, Carter extended her reach into the social and cultural arenas, helping more than just her students. Her work includes developing rehabilitation programs for women in prison. She viewed politics as a way to connect with people who needed help the most, and in 2001, joined the PNM party, becoming a government minister in the office of the prime minister, social services delivery, and ecclesiastical affairs. Born in Scarborough, Tobago, Cynthia Alfred was appointed an opposition senator in 1996 under the People's National Movement. During her time in the National Parliament, Ms. Alfred's first contribution was on an Elections and Boundaries Commission report, where she was quick to identify the matters that would affect Tobagonians. In all of her subsequent contributions, which included several finance bills, a Salaries Reviews Commission report, a Land Acquisition Bill, and a Pounds Amendment Bill, she successfully managed to provide the Tobago perspective on the discussion at hand. Ms. Alfred was always a strong advocate for greater consultation between central government and the Tobago House of Assembly over the five years she sat in the Senate. Today, 
Miss Alfred continues to be involved in politics in the Tobago House of Assembly, where she is the Deputy Chief Secretary and Secretary of Community Development and Culture. Tobagonian-born Jaylene John is the perfect example of a village raising a child. Growing up in Charlottesville, her father was a supervisor at the Ministry of Works. From his example, John learned skills that would serve her well in her future political career. The Charlottesville lifestyle didn't hurt either. Village discussions on everything from culture to politics were the norm and John was an avid listener. Her career began in the private sector. She was manager of the IOB's MBA program before accepting a post as head of the Public Transport Service Commission. Appointed as a senator by the UNC in 2000, John served in the capacity of Minister of Transport and was assigned the onerous responsibility of completing the Piaco Airport Development Project amidst allegations of corruption and mismanagement. In time, she resigned and returned to the private sector, where she continues to function as the CEO of a major food service chain. The first woman in Trinidad and Tobago to become a solicitor, Glenda Maureen Phillip was also the first woman to become president of the Trinidad and Tobago Law Association. Starting her career as a teacher in 1963, she went to study 11 years later with the Law Society of England. Maureen Phillip entered the political arena in 2001, serving as Attorney General and is currently Trinidad and Tobago's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. Every one of these women has had an impact on modern-day politics in Trinidad and Tobago and made it easier for other women to enter the political arena and make a meaningful difference to the development of our country.